Okay, so as you can see, I'm not yet using any particular book for teaching these things so far. I'm taking material from different places and we used one magic bus uh, book on solar system. So now if you listen to the podcasts from the first section, you know, on the channel I have arranged them into sections, then you have learned about energy coming in, energy going out, where we are in the solar system, how the energy coming in changes with orbital changes, what we call obliquity, precession, ellipticity and so on. Now we will add something more specific. We looked at why Venus is so hot and why Mars is cold and talked about uh, the impacts of those gases in the atmosphere that trap the thermal energy, the infrared energy or the long wave energy that's trying to go out of any planet and Earth is trying to do the sa same thing. Remember we receive short wave energy and it heats everything, also evaporates and does other things and then uh, it has to emit the thermal energy to stay at a you know temperature that doesn't keep increasing or keep decreasing that's called the greenhouse effect and we talked about the Goldilocks syndrome the Goldilocks blanket that the earth has and we said earth has got this perfect temperature not too warm not too hot for what for life right now as far as we know there is life on earth i'm talking to you you're listening to me and we are pretty sure this is not happening on any other planet or moon of any other planet on our solar system and the general idea so far is that there must be some reason why life has evolved on earth and we have evolved to be so powerful we can perturb the environment so much and now we are trying to learn how to reduce our impacts and so on right so in that context greenhouse effect is very important because that's the key process by which the energy coming in and the energy going out are balancing and that balance happens at a certain temperature I mentioned also that the thermal energy is proportional to the temperature times you know power to the power of four so if the body is emitting thermal radiation then that's the black body radiation that uh, we assume is happening usually you receive energy like the blacksmith's iron in the fire and as he puts more and more energy it can get redder and whiter depending on how hot it is so the energy coming out depends on the temperature at which the energy is coming out okay so we already learned that the Sun is sending us energy and some of it gets reflected and they are in different wavelengths some of it is getting absorbed at the top we said the ultraviolet energy gets absorbed in the upper atmosphere if you are older student learning from uh, listening to this podcast then you probably heard that in the stratosphere we haven't defined it if you don't know what it is don't panic don't worry about it uh, it's the upper atmosphere let's say where the UV strong UV damaging UV to us is absorbed by ozone molecules so that's seen to be blocked here and what comes into the atmosphere to the surface is the visible or shortwave radiation and albedo that we talked about reflects some of it and we'll look at this a bit more but you can see here the northern uh, hemisphere polar region the Arctic Ocean which has ice snow and so on is white which means it's like a mirror if you shine light on the mirror the mirror will reflect the light back at you so Sun's radiation is going to reflect back and go back to space because of the albedo we'll learn that Earth has if you average all the different albedos for example this has a high albedo and land has a lower albedo and ocean has you know even lower albedo depending on the angle at which the sun's light is coming we said that when you're flying if you have ever taken a flight 
if you look out the window, which you should, if the sun is on s at some angle, then the reflected light from the ocean can be very bright. But if the sun is above when you are flying, then ocean can look very dark. So albedos are not constant. It depends on whether there is vegetation on land, there is desert on land and so on and so forth. So when you average all these albedos, we'll look at a map a little bit later on, you will get an average of 0.3. What does that mean? Albedo goes from 0, which means all the sun's energy is absorbed, to 1, which means all the sun's energy is reflected. So somewhere in the middle, 30%, which means on average, Earth reflects about 30% of the sun's energy coming in. So that is what is being shown here. So you have 70% of the visible radiation coming in. Then it gets reflected by clouds. You know, clouds look bright, fluffy. Sometimes they look dark and so on. So some gets reflected by the clouds. There are also other gases like water vapor, which can also, you know, uh, allow the sunlight to come in or absorb it and so on. So we'll see how much actually makes it to the surface and then we'll see what happens to that energy. And that energy, of course, is converted to thermal energy as we already learned, which has to go back out. Right? That determines the average temperature of the earth. We always talk about average temperature because depending on where you are living you know that you are living in either a cold climate or a warm climate and uh, you know a place that is colder than your uh, town let's say or a city and so on. So temperatures vary from spot to spot and when we do these energy balances it's easier to talk about total energy coming in, total energy going out average temperature we call it global average and sometimes we, you hear things like global warming so that's what we will do okay what's the greenhouse effect you probably already heard of a greenhouse which is basically a transparent structure within which people are growing things so this is not an exact analogy to what's happening on earth but it's very useful analogy that's where the name comes from what are we using the greenhouse for it controls the weather inside sun's energy is coming in we are trapping it by using glass so glass allows it to come in the thermal energy cannot go out because glass is blocking it and then there is sprinklers inside there is water vapor inside which cannot escape in the open area outside there is wind which will evaporate the water there is sun's energy that is going to go back as thermal energy and so on and so forth whereas within the greenhouse you have a controlled weather and that's why you can grow plants vegetables flowers and so on more efficiently in the greenhouse so this is an analogy to some extent to what we are talking about earth has a greenhouse effect which we already mentioned there are certain greenhouse gases which we will look at which allow the sun's short wave energy to come in and they block the outgoing long wave or thermal energy or the infrared energy that's what we call the greenhouse effect right so we'll proceed with that greenhouse effect by looking at the real world now so we talked about the ultraviolet radiation the visible radiation and some of that visible radiation is going to fall on the clouds and if the cloud is bright white it's going to reflect some of that ri uh, light and energy and if there is a molecule like CO2 or water vapor or methane they allow the sun's energy to come in why does it do that these molecules they have a certain structure right so why do we call them molecules because carbon is an atom oxygen is an atom they are chemically combined to produce co2 so carbon is oxidized into carbon dioxide co2 if you haven't learned chemistry just uh, understand as much as you can with these and the water vapor is hydrogen and oxygen together H2O and methane of course carbon and hydrogen 
called CH4. Those who have done some chemistry know that CH4 is not oxidized, it's a reduced form of carbon and CO2 is oxidized, it's an oxidized form of carbon. So these molecules because of their structure they are not sensitive to short wave radiation so short wave radiation can go right through them. It's like having a mirror that only allows some light to go in. So if you have a house let's say or a building that you have seen which has reflecting glasses it allows some light to come in but it blocks uh, strong sunlight to keep uh, the inside cooler and so on. Or you have sunglasses which allow you to see but they block a mm, lot of the sunlight especially ultraviolet radiation which is harmful to your eyes and so on and so forth. So what uh, why are they called greenhouse gases? Obviously because when the thermal energy is trying to go out they absorb this energy because their molecular structure is sensitive to the thermal radiation. There is things called wavelengths, we call short wave and the long wave. So if you think about uh, energy, energy is higher at shorter wavelengths like the sun's radiation. Long wave is thermal energy, your body is emitting thermal energy which doesn't burn you. When you have a fever it goes up and your mother can feel it and say oh my god you are uh, having a fever and so on or you can use a thermometer to measure it as well. So they absorb these uh, thermal energy bands, wavelengths and what happens if they absorb it? Their energy goes up. So the molecule begins to have movement either rotation or bending if you don't understand don't worry about it so these molecules acquire energy like the pot that is getting heated that we looked at before and that energy makes them warmer once they get warmer because of the absorbed thermal energy they begin to emit the thermal energy in every direction sun's energy is coming towards us in one direction but a molecule that's hot is going to emit thermal energy in every direction as is shown here. Which means what? They are not only trapping outgoing thermal energy and blocking it from going back to space, but they are reflecting or emitting some of that thermal energy back towards the surface. So surface is receiving radiation from the sun and now it's also receiving thermal energy emitted from the g greenhouse gases so it's going to get warmer. So we are saying two things. There is a greenhouse effect because of these greenhouse gases which trap the outgoing thermal energy and they ref emit that thermal energy also towards the earth of course towards the space as well and it is this emission towards the earth that is going to make the surface warmer. So in the natural climate, let's say before human beings started to increase the greenhouse gases, we'll come back to that. The climate was balanced in some way, energy was coming in, energy was going out, there is a natural greenhouse effect because uh, carbon dioxide, methane and water vapor have always been there since the uh, earth evolved and the solar system evolved but there was a balance right and the balance changed over time because the sun's energy also changed over time remember we talked about sunspots and we talked about uh, orbital changes and that changed the energy coming in we talked about ice ages which we'll talk again and that changes the reflectivity of the sunlight and so on. So energy balance is not constant throughout the time but it changes which means temperature also changes but it is in some kind of a balance. What are we doing? We are increasing the greenhouse gases mainly carbon dioxide but also methane and water vapor by our activities like the fossil fuels we use, we burn coal, we burn petrol, we burn natural gas and we are doing, uh, we are growing rice which produces uh, methane, we have a lot of cows which produce some methane and why is water vapor in the atmosphere changing? This is very intuitive, you know it and yet you may not be able to answer it but if you think for a second you may be able to come up with the answer. Here is the question. 
does warm air become more humid or does cold air become more humid I think you know the answer cold air is drier has less humidity or a vapor than warm air warm air holds more moisture so often in Mumbai where I'm sitting right now as I'm recording this in this month of May bef just before the monsoon temperatures get very warm why because the Sun is coming north across the equator and land is heating ocean is heating warm air wants more moisture it's very thirsty so it will begin to pick up moisture from the ocean evaporation from evaporation from uh, water in the soil water in the lakes and so on and it gets more humid okay so when we warm the temperatures because of increasing greenhouse gases we increase certain greenhouse gases in response to the warming like water vapor what does that mean more warm you make it by increasing greenhouse gases more water vapor in the air and water vapor is a greenhouse gas as we are saying here which means it's blocking the thermal radiation and it is emitting back to the surface so it's going to make it even warmer okay these are called vicious circles or scientifically call them positive feedback feedback means what somebody does something and then there is a response let's say your brother or your sister took your toy it annoys you you start screaming your brother or sister gets some joy out of you and takes more toys from you and you scream more so this is a positive feedback and your mother has to come and control this situation similarly in nature you have positive feedbacks you can also think of negative feedbacks okay so just keep that in mind think of an example of a negative feedback we'll come back and talk about it in the next podcast okay so I've said a few things but the concept is very simple we are trying to explain the greenhouse effect we started with the garden and the greenhouse and we moved to the greenhouse gases and we're talking about how greenhouse gases trap the outgoing thermal energy from the surface and reflect it or emit it back to earth and this makes the climate warmer makes the surface warmer and human beings are using fossil fuels like coal and petrol and uh, natural gas to produce greenhouse gases more and more which means we are trapping more and more of the thermal energy making the climate warmer and warmer which is what we call global warming there are other ways in which we are increasing greenhouse gases as well <coughs> and you can think of those let's say we cut down forests does that increase greenhouse gases can you think about the answer if not you send me a message okay so let's stop this podcast here and come back and continue to continue this discussion on greenhouse gases okay see you in the next 